raising the IQ and bank rolls of sports bettors everywhere. The Better IQ Podcast is your source for sports betting information, analysis, and opinions. Learn, bet, win. Better IQ. Good afternoon and welcome to the Better IQ Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lang. We'll take a break from a College of Basketball and we're going to tackle the NBA. Got a big slate of uh, games and uh, our guest here for today, Aaron Rennie, and I were uh, talking off air that uh, a rarity is uh, not a whole lot. There's always injuries, but not a whole lot of uh, injuries. In fact, I don't have one game that is currently circled on my screen, so that's a good thing. Should get some uh, competitive games here for uh, tonight. Uh, before we begin, it's $5 Wednesday at Better IQ. All daily plays discount to five bucks. I know we got a couple of best bets. Aaron's got three plays for five dollars. You can check all those out while you're listening and break down the games at the buy picks page at Better IQ. All right, let's welcome in. See how he's doing. Er, how are you this afternoon? Oh, I'm doing good. As you mentioned, uh, pretty good card to handicap in the NBA. Don't have a lot of guys questionable. Uh, you know, with the injury bug, you never know. Uh, guys can start scratching at any uh, particular time here, Andrew. But uh, Again, it feels like, um, you know, it, it's it's kind of interesting. You never know about this NBA schedule. It's just it's always a little bit funkier nowadays, and they're trying to get rid of these back-to-back situations. So, you know, Monday there was 11 games. Uh, yesterday, just three games. Nobody was on a back-to-back. And then today, uh, back to 11 games, which is the Celtics uh, playing in a back-to-back situation. So, you know, they're trying to go out of their way and, and – they do. They do a much better job scheduling, uh, so these teams are not in a lot of these uh, back-to-back tough situations. Um, but we still uh, get plenty of guys resting and this and that. So uh, anyway, uh, looking forward here to tonight's uh, card. Yeah. Well, speaking of the uh, Boston uh, Celtics, Aaron, they play host to uh, Portland Celtics. Still yet to kind of find their uh, groove. They're thirty-seven and twenty-four. Portland, meanwhile. 37 and 23, and the uh, Trailblazers taking a little bit of money here. Boston opened three and a half, but quickly uh, down to uh, two and a half, where uh, a majority of offshore sports books currently uh, sit. Got a total of 226 and a half. What are your thoughts, Aaron? Yeah, this is going to be an interesting game. You know, I was kind of waiting around to see what Boston was going to do because it just did seem like a opportune time for Boston to sit guys. They've sat guys in this situation uh, throughout the the uh, the campaign. Um, you know, as far as maybe Kyrie would be rested, and sure enough, uh, Rozier is now questionable uh, for tonight. So their backup point guard, which certainly means something. Uh, to this team, but more than anything, where is this Boston Celtics team right now? Boy, uh, three straight losses uh, for the Celtics. Uh, their last two of them not good against Chicago and Toronto. Uh, of course, the Bulls beat them over the weekend, 126 to 116. Toronto last night, pretty much embarrassing uh, for the Celtics, losing 118 to 95. Now, back to back situation, travel from Toronto last night. It just. You know, obviously there's some sort of unrest, and they mentioned it in the post game. You could clearly see it on the court as well. Uh, this is just a detached team, and it's just hard <clears throat> to figure that they're going to be able to straighten that out, uh, essentially on no rest here. Uh, Andrew, I was thinking, well, it seems like Kyrie Irving is maybe the source of the problems and thought maybe he would maybe scratch, and it might be an opportune time to bet on the Celtics. Uh, that they rally without him on the court, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So uh, it really becomes Portland, and I'll pro- I'm going to have a small bet here on the Blazers. Uh, for the uh, Portland right now, four straight wins, four straight spread covers, uh, playing extremely good basketball. Uh, they beat the Warriors uh, that game right before the break, 129 to 107. Uh, but so far on this road trip, taking care of business against Brooklyn, Philadelphia and Cleveland. I mean, the schedule has been tough enough uh, for this team, and Portland continues to excel and play pretty good basketball. Um, so uh, I see some plus threes uh, in Las Vegas, Andrew, and uh, I think that is definitely worth a small bet here on Portland. Let's move down to uh, Detroit and San Antonio. Detroit playing pretty good basketball here. What have they won? Either the last 10, three straight. They find themselves, despite being one game under 500. Uh, looks as if the uh, Pistons are going to find their way into the Eastern Conference uh, playoffs. San Antonio, meanwhile, 
uh, Aaron, you know, we've been doing this podcast stuff for, for years and, uh, a common theme when we discuss the Spurs has been just their, um, you know, ability to cover point spreads and under basketball team playing, you know, good defense. And that's been the complete opposite here, particularly of a late, you talked about a last show uh, we had last week about their struggles outside the break, particularly covering the numbers and they've trended uh, toward the over here, uh, this season. What's going to happen here tonight. They find themselves four point favorites, got a total of uh two twenty one, two twenty and a half. and a half. Yeah. Interesting over trends with both of these teams, Andrew, the Spurs seven Seven and one uh, over the total their last uh, eight games. The defense has just been <laughs> been uh, completely uh, non-existent uh, for this team, and it's interesting because with the Spurs, you know, it's not like they're playing at a crazy pace, and the defense has just been a disaster. Now, you know, the roster from day one they put together this season was going to be limited uh, from a defensive standpoint, and they had their struggles to start the season. Then kind of changed their scheme and uh, did a pretty good job and won some games. Games trended under the total, uh, but they have just lost their way here. Now, keep in mind, their last eight games have been on the road, and it's just it's a really interesting scheduling spot here uh, for San Antonio. They haven't played a, a home game uh, since February the 2nd, just one home game in February. That was way back on the 2nd. They've been on the rodeo road trip. They take it every single year. And they won just one game straight up against Memphis, one and seven straight up. And Andrew, it wasn't much better against the spread as well. Just one and seven uh, against the spread, as we mentioned, uh, and trending over the total. Uh, that means the defense has just been absolutely terrible. Now, we know the All-Star break was in there as well. So they played five games on the road, took the All-Star break, and then came back for three more games uh, on the road against Toronto, New York. Uh, and Brooklyn. Uh, so again, it just seems like kind of a tricky spot uh, for San Antonio to finally get home uh, and to expect them to excel. Uh, you know, just not easy to do. And you mentioned Detroit playing their best basketball of the season. It's funny because uh, I go back to February the 2nd for them as well. It was a Saturday afternoon. They played the LA Clippers at home. Uh, they had a big lead, about a 20 point lead against the Clippers. They blew that lead eventually got beat uh, by 10 points in that contest. I was pretty much ready to write, uh, I did, uh, write the Pistons off for the season. And since the, since that game, they have rallied. And they have won seven of their last eight. They have covered six of their last eight. I mentioned the overtrends for this team as well. Six straight games uh, over the total uh, right now for the Detroit Pistons. So uh, interesting to see how this one plays out. But I'm going to have a bet here. Uh, on Detroit, uh, playing that better basketball here of late. Uh, see how it works out as an underdog bet here tonight. Spurs are going to make the playoffs, Aaron. They're currently in the eighth spot. Uh, you know, I think it's up for grabs. I mean, I don't feel really confident in uh, putting them in the playoffs. Now, the schedule is going to get more to their liking uh, at this point, but they have some decent teams that are chasing them uh, as far as Sacramento, Minnesota, and the Lakers. So, um, yeah, interesting to see. Is and as soon as tonight, uh, we'll see how it plays out for this team. The Clippers they're currently in the uh, seventh uh, spot as they head to uh, Utah. You got the Jazz bet up from nine, uh, some nine and a halves out there. Aaron two twenty seven and a half the uh, total. Yeah, interesting matchup between these two teams here with the Clippers. Uh, they've been on kind of a wild ride from a scheduling perspective as well. Uh, they've just been on the road seemingly forever. And they they were on the road a ton before the All-Star break. Came home for just that one game against Phoenix. uh, Won that game going away, but then came back out on the road uh, for the All-Star break at Memphis and at Denver. And then kind of a back-to-back situation. Came home in not a great spot uh, and beat Dallas 121-112 to on Monday night. So here they go uh, back to Utah for this game. Uh, then they're going to follow that up with a trip to Sacramento. So the schedule has been pretty tough uh, for this team. You know, they traded Tobias Harris at the trade deadline, uh, the, but they did get uh, recently back Daniel uh, Gallinari. So, you know, it's a team that they they said they're trying to make the playoffs, obviously. Uh, I don't know if there's a real sense of urgency uh, within this team. And I thought maybe I was going to take a shot here with the Utah Jazz, but, boy, not at this price. thought this price uh, was awfully tall. Uh, for this team, uh, um, or I'm sorry, for this game, U- uh, Utah, a nine and a half point favorite here 
uh, against the Clippers. Now, keep in mind the last time these two teams met uh, as well, uh, Utah beat the Clippers big time uh, on their uh, home court. Or I'm sorry, uh, or Utah's was on the road at the Clippers. Utah won that game 129 to 109. Um, uh, so you know, perhaps uh, the Clippers remember that game. We'll see how it uh, works out. Utah have been an interesting team, and you know, it just they just haven't shown the medal that they did last year. Even though now uh, this is a team that's. Um, you know, even though they've won three of their last five, they've actually covered uh, five straight games, getting inside the number against Oklahoma City and Golden State uh, on the road. The schedule is really going to lighten up for this team, but I just haven't seen uh, the same sense of urgency as last year. So, uh, if anything, just going to lean under the total in this one tonight. Next game, uh, Milwaukee, one of the hottest teams, if not the hottest team in the uh, NBA. They've won uh, five uh, straight. Great team against the uh, spread. They got the pedal to the metal here of uh, late here, Aaron, as they head to uh, Sacramento. We mentioned Sacramento currently in the ninth spot in the uh, Western uh, Conference, playing pretty good basketball, 31-29 and 29 overall. Uh, Bucks taking money, though, five, now up to six and a half, 234 and a half, 235 the total. You know, really a two very positive against the spread teams. You know, the Bucks 35, 22, and 3, but Sacramento's been right there as well, 36 and 24 uh, against the number. Interesting if you go back to their uh, first meeting way back in November 11th, um, uh, Milwaukee beat Sacramento 144 to 109. That was an interesting game. I believe it was on a Sunday afternoon, perhaps a Saturday, and Sacramento had actually. You know, not much was made at Sacramento this year uh, at that point. And they had gone on the road and had a couple of impressive victories. It was kind of an early afternoon start uh, in Milwaukee, and that game completely got away from them. Uh, so interesting how this rematch is going to uh, play out uh, for the Kings, certainly in the playoff hunt. And they're, you know, they're three, and th- three and three straight up in their last six games, but they've actually covered five of their last six. And Remember I mentioned, you know, at the trade deadline, Andrew, they went out and got Harrison Barnes from Dallas, said, hey, we're all in. We're trying to make the playoffs. Number one, Dallas, or I'm sorry, Sacramento does not have their number one pick uh, for next year. So you know this team is going to be all out to make the playoffs. But, you know, I mentioned how bad of a trade and how dumb of a trade it was for Sacramento to go get Harrison Barnes. Well, last game when they lost to Minnesota, um. Uh, on Monday night, Minnesota won that game 112-105. to 105. Uh, You look at the line for Harrison Barnes here for Sacramento in that contest. Andrew, 0-4 from the field, two points from Harrison Barnes, uh, making a ton of money, uh, just a really dumb move uh, by the Sacramento Kings. So I don't expect this team to go on uh, and make the playoffs. I do expect them to be uh, competitive here tonight against the Bucs. Uh, the Bucks. Um, interesting win for them the other night against Chicago without uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Uh, before that, they had a couple nice wins against Minnesota and Boston. This team continues to we- uh, excel, uh, play well in win games, uh, but I still think there's a little bit more of a sense of urgency here uh, for Sacramento tonight. Um, uh, lean to the Kings uh, tonight in Sacramento. And we got a, <clears throat> excuse me, a long way to uh, go. Uh, you know, Milwaukee got in the postseason last year, lost in the uh, first round to Boston, a good series, and ended up losing four to uh, three. Milwaukee currently with a two game lead. Is this the type of team that you envision? I mean, are they all out to get that number one seed? Is that like ultra important to them, or you know, or are they taking a different approach? You know, again, is it stark contrast like a Golden State that's obviously more concerned about keeping guys healthy and rested? Uh, how's Milwaukee approach the uh, final stretch drive? I, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, Budenholzer has made it clear with some of his Atlanta teams that he, you know, he he did rest a lot of veterans uh, with those teams when they ha- when they had some of their better teams, and he's been that way with Milwaukee. Middleton has missed a couple of games. Giannis has missed a couple of games, so he's keeping these guys healthy. But you know, they, they've played a relatively easy schedule. They're in the Eastern Conference, got a ton of games against Cleveland and Chicago, uh, etc. So. I, I think they're certainly aware. I don't think it's all out to get that number one seed. So, uh, you know, I'm interested to see how it plays out. You can't fault their scoring differential so far this year, outscoring the opposition by 9.7 points per game. Toronto second place right now, 5.5 points uh, per game. So that, it's certainly something and a feather that I'm sure they would like to have their uh, in their cap in, in the end. 
Last game here in New Orleans. Uh, they're in uh, L.A. taking on the Lakers. This ESPN. The other ESPN game was going to be uh, Bo- Portland and Boston, so this is the uh, nightcap and the uh, Lakers. Uh, we heard LeBron come out say, hey, it's, uh, it's playoff LeBron. I'm here. Uh, <laughs> the markets have been kind of reacting to that, Aaron, a little bit as we've seen uh, the Lakers in a couple games take some money. But, you know, again, we're still kind of waiting here. Are they going to be able to uh, flip the switch? They've had opportunities, and it's one good game followed up by one uh, bad game. And, in fact, uh, one of their really bad games here recently was against uh, New Orleans, one of their worst games here where they have like 35 turnovers. It wasn't that high, but it was a real bad performance. Here's the uh, rematch. Market taken. Uh, the Lakers here is four, now up to a five and a half, 239 the total. Yeah, I mean, they've had a lot of bad games here, Andrew. I mean, you know, you look at four of their last five games. Um, that Sunday game against Philadelphia before the break, they lose 143 to 120. Uh, then they went to Atlanta on Tuesday. They lost 117 to 113. Now they came out uh, after the break against Houston and pretty much left for dead in that game, down by 18 midway through the third quarter, come back to somehow win that game, uh, 111 to 106, but really inexcusable uh, to follow that up. Uh, at New Orleans, New Orleans was in a back-to-back situation. Anthony Davis didn't play. Uh, they get beat 128 to 115, and I bet them the other night. I thought that was the spot. Uh, this was the uh, the game for the Lakers to show up, and they go into Memphis and lose 110 uh, to 105, and just disappointed all the way around uh, for this Lakers uh, team. I mean, the defense, uh, the bench, it just it's a team that another team that just seems fractured, and we'll see if they can put it together. But uh, playoff LeBron uh, doesn't seem like enough uh, at this point. So interesting to see how this one plays out. Uh, under the ESPN lights, of course, New Orleans. New Orleans has been funny because they've been well, almost the opposite. They have been kind of left for dead and uh, all the Anthony Davis saga, uh, et cetera, and they've continued to fight and, and play pretty well. So, um, again, kind of an interesting game here, how it plays out. I, I did not bet this game, and certainly you look at the Lakers, you would expect an all-out performance um, perhaps he, he looked to bet them in game, but I'm not just not ready to lay uh, five and a half points with this team. I did the other night, and I just came away thoroughly disappointed. Good stuff here from Aaron Renning. How about three plays for tonight? Just five bucks is a part of a five dollar Wednesday at Better IQ. All daily selections uh, discounted just to five dollars, including best bets, sides, totals, college basketball, NBA, plenty of choices. Be sure to check out the uh, Buy Picks page at BetterIQ.com. If you're new to us, you can sign up an account up in that upper right-hand corner. You also get signed up for that uh, newsletter. I know our free picks have been extremely a strong written analysis from the uh, Better IQ handicappers uh, in your email box uh, throughout the uh, business week. Okay, that'll wrap up the uh, show. Uh, thank you for uh, listening. We'll be back talking more hoops tomorrow. 